<laughs> Please, I need a filter. Hold on one second. I always talk about being accountable, but we're going to do a filter today. <laughs> Peace, Uncle Rod. I, I tried. I tried to do a filter, but I was so ugly it didn't do nothing but make shit work. <laughs> no, you are very handsome. You are very handsome. You know, you're just I, trying to make me blush. No, it's funny because you, you look like my youngest son. Oh, okay. So I say that to say that I've been trying to speak with you and tell you, like, we are all from. You know, we're related a lot of times. Or, or yeah. not so more so related like bloodline but tribe you know we we yeah. met each other in, in past lives yeah and <clears throat> that's why we have that familiarity when we meet certain people right like, don't i know you from somewhere right. no you don't know me <laughs> no motherfucker i know your ass from some goddamn where you don't know me yeah motherfucker i know or your like ass you, you just but i don't know where like i know you, you, you was let like you pick up like you left off just like five days ago mm -hmm. you know so definitely yeah. how are you feeling today um, like I got a cape on with an S on that motherfucker. <laughs> you got an S on your chest. No, what my cousin say? He say you got an S. Um, you got an S in the middle like a skittle. No, he say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah, we just really knocking. Yeah. So what's the question we gonna uh, go over the uh? Cause you know in the. In a tarot spread, you get your most accurate information from specific questions. That is true. That is true. Right. So um, the more specific the question, then the easier it is to narrow down the answer. And also, it shouldn't be a yes or no question. You want to try to make right. it a question that can be expounded on, like, you know, that you could build off of, too. Uh, so the, the the way that the question wrote, the question is like turning the dial for the radio in order for the answer to come in. Yeah. The visualization is used as an aid to sharpen the particular sense. Right? So when right. you pick up your, your deck, your deck is the radio. Right. Right. The question is telling you what to dial the radio into. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And then the answer come back through the radio as the song that you requested with the question. Right. So as you lay the cards down, you are playing the notes mm -hmm. to the song that is the question. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The more you um, know about symbolism and the meanings of different things, the more you can fine tune your equalizer in order to get a crisper, clearer reading from your Oracle read. Okay. Right. So there are certain things like you always study um, symbolism. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have Get you different dictionaries of symbols, encyclopedias of symbols, because you want to know what symbols look like or mean in different um, from different points of view. Right. The more symbols you can assimilate a meaning to, the more you, when you see that symbol, it's fine tuning the oracle read. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, let me look in the questions and see if there's something good in there that we can read on. Because sometimes I think I get jumbled. Like I realize that because like you're saying, you know, you need to sharpen your skill. I, I, I pull from personal experience a lot of times because I'm not as in depth in different things. Like how you're saying to be able to communicate it in different ways. So that makes sense. So you see how you say you pull from personal experience? Mm -hmm. You ever read the cards and you have a overwhelming emotional sensation? Mm -hmm. And then you'll remember the last time you had that sensation, what did it mean? Mm -hmm. Because now you are picking up the vibration or the frequency of the message 
um, energetically, so it's stimulating you emotionally, and the subconscious mind is going to bring the energy up according to how you remember the feeling. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, like, for instance, something horrible happened, somebody called on the phone, and you know that your uh, stomach, your heart dropped to your stomach as soon as you pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. You already know the frequency. You feel the frequency before they ever say anything. Right. And you say, hello? <laughs> you already know. You, you're you expecting what to expect. So you already you, Right. Yeah. So when you do the tarot read, you'll get that same sensation. Right. Right. And that's telling you the answer to the symbol that you that activated that energy. Right. That's like I have to get my breath together, too, because your, my breath allows me to tune into exactly what the feeling is, you know. And so like mm -hmm. in future in the future for us as a tribe and as a collective, the reason why you hear a lot of people talking about fasting why you hear them talking about um, cleansing your body, removing metals and detoxing at this time, especially people that you never thought you would hear talking about that is because you need to be fine tuned in with your intuition. You need to be fine tuned into your discernment. So when you, when it say left, you don't have a question in your mind about it being left or right. Right. So this is why you as a um, Oracle, or you read tarot, Tarot is the training wheels on your intuition. Mm -hmm. It's going to get to a point where the card will start flipping in your mind off of an event. And you will know, oh, that's a night of, that's a, a, a night of swords. It's coming in fast in the air. Right. Right. You automatically see it playing out. Because it's the same way that the hieroglyphs in Egypt, when you go to what they call the uh, alpha state, they turn into animated cartoons, and that's how you really get the meaning mm -hmm. of what the what the hieroglyphs are saying. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual uh, vision being trained through the oracle practice allows you to bring to life the message that's in the um, in the hieroglyphs. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So when you start recognizing the tarot cards in real time while you driving down the street that's your subconscious mind now uh, calibrating your conscious mind to read everything you see as you go along as a tarot card mm -hmm. that's just like now, when you read people's energies and basically like when you can read somebody and, and just tell like they vibe is off or whatever right mm -hmm. now the good thing about the tarot read that's different than just knowing they vibe is off, the things that surround the person is going to tell you exactly why they vibe is off mm -hmm. and exactly why you need to avoid them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the layout of the cards is just being played out in real time among the average people. Mm -hmm. They don't see it because they are taught that the uh, oracle reading is evil. Right. But reading the oracles is not even the goal. You read the oracles to tune your intuition so that you can read what Mother Nature needs you to know in order for you to effectuate change on Earth as one of the gods that walk the Earth. Mm -hmm. If you're not prepared to read the messages of Mother Nature as you walk through life and make the adjustments that she tell you to make, then you still low vibrational frequency. You haven't reached what we call God form yet. Mm -hmm. But we all got a training um, program in our book of life. And this is how we know when we look back on our life, we can read our book of life. By understanding the things that we went through that was difficult was the test. But everything on the test was in the practice. Mm. But because it was practice, it was made easier because it was spread out. Right. That's when you get nervous right. when it's the real deal. You're like, hold on, wait. <laughs> right. So me. that's when you find yourself in adverse conditions saying, how the fuck I get here? Mm-hmm. 
right? Like I was in the joint looking at the brick wall talking about how in the fuck I end up in some shit like this. Not listening. <laughs> no. That's not my God form. Yeah. My God form, I can't, I wouldn't be able to tolerate it. In my God form, I would be, shit, I would be a draped on maniac. You know what that is, right? I was about to ask you, what is that? <laughs> so, drapedomania was the condition that they said that the so-called slave had when they kept trying to run away from mm -hmm. captivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they said they were drapedomaniacs. They were runaways. Oh, they had to make a from... label. They had to make a label for something that was an oh, adverse yeah. effect. Oh yeah, they got they, look. They got so much shit. I be, I was dying laughing. I'm like, you actually. And then they got a remedy, like for what do you do for the drape the maniac to make it stop running away? Yeah, they make got the a disease remedy. and make the uh, what's it called? The um, the, the cure. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so. And be the only one that <clears throat> they got it. That's the that's the coldest dealer in the game. The psyop dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh going through looking, trying to see if I okay. I'm gonna look in here and see if I can find another question. Okay. I'll shuffle. That's crazy though. Like, um, I first was introduced to you um, through Little Big Sis Imani, the hood healer. And it was just so much information this information, information, spirit, information, information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and then um she was you know she was talking about she she's a truth teller and people get on her so much because it's hard for them to come out of their mind and conceptualize the message that spirits bring into them and a lot of times like we we find comfort in being the victim to something you know being victim to disease circumstance you know and all of these different things instead of being the victor to it and figuring out, you know, what the cause was and what the solution is. So when she would talk about things like, you know, you don't suffer from depression, you don't suffer from endometriosis, like some things are chemical, yes, but a lot of things are um, like built up off of what we do. And so we have to stop screaming victim to the shit that we create in our own life. Because that's that mentality, that's, that's the mentality that they put on us to take a hold of us. And now we find them pride in that victim mentality, talking about, you know, twerk for justice and do this and do that instead of actually doing the shit that equates to the change. You know, one of the things that we are taught with this slave system narrative that they've been pushing is that we were perpetual victims. Yes. And therefore, all we gonna ever be is victims. Victimized. So, if you look at our complaints, it's not that they not accurate. Right. Right. They is killing us in the street. Mm -hmm. The police is shooting down our people. Mm -hmm. Right. The they are kidnapping our kids, using them for food products, sex toys, and uh, okay. for drugs. Right, organ harvesting. This is all true. But the thing about it is, even though it's true, you, nobody's trying to stop it. Everybody wants to whine about it. Right. So if you're not going to do anything to stop it, what the fuck is you whining for? And stopping it is, it starts in it starts internally. Stopping it really starts with you <clears throat> changing yourself and your perception and, and and what you do and what you do it for. Mm -hmm. It's not just running up in the streets all the time, definitely, but you know what I'm saying? You got you definitely gotta start with your own perception. Yeah. So instead of just laying there to be a victim, suffering from learned helplessness, say, wait a minute, motherfucker, stop kicking me while I'm down. Get your motherfucking foot off my neck before I move and break your whole goddamn leg out of the socket. 
and beat you to death with that motherfucker. Did, I'm not the Martin Luther King, we shall overcome. I see. That's well, that. Well, not even that. I'm I, the, I believe, I agree with you. I think there is a time when war is war. But also, you know what I'm saying? Like, war looks like community. War looks like you getting your, your shit in order so that you, you're not lazy no more. You at least grow on your own food or if you your own food. And if you're not, you protecting the old lady down the street who knows how to grow food. You protecting the other woman or the other man and his family because they have this and you can do that. Like all that separate shit, all that rah rah, you using it for the wrong things. And also when you when you when it's time to do that call, when it's time to move forward, have your ducks in a row, like Unc said. Yeah, it goes back to what I said earlier about me positioning myself to do this work where I I I cushion myself where I cannot fall in any direction. Right. Everything that I'm doing, I set it up before I walked away from the system where I can navigate through their system without being part of it. I heard, I saw somebody just say, deer don't hide. Do you know how to hunt? I know some of y'all do. I know some of y'all in the backwoods, y'all have that innate ability, but here in Cali, here in the cities, like who knows how to hunt? Who knows how to start a fire? Who knows how to forage? Who knows what, what herbs and medicine are gonna heal what? Who knows little big sis with spitting game? Who knows CPR? Who knows basic first aid? Who knows these things? Because when you're talking about you want to go out there, you're not prepared after that, then what? Then yeah. what? Because when it's chaos in the streets, what you going to do? Be in survival mode and for yourself, and that's not the way that you win. Well, when you're in survival mode, that's desperation. Exactly. And under desperation, you're going to make tactical errors because with the desperations, it's going to cause mistakes be to be made. You think any rationally. Right. So the mistake will surface as a tactical error that will put you in an adverse position. Right? But sometimes what looks like a tactical error is an only option scenario where you have no other way to to play this shit but to play the hand you dealt. Right. Right. So um that's the key part to understanding that we all going through this shit on different levels in different directions in different ways. And some of us had it hard as fuck. Right. And if Right is right and wrong is wrong. The ones that had it the hardest need some relief now. Right? But they, you know, they, when, when they you go pay to, their dues mm -hmm. to get their free. But when you go into retirement, you have to set yourself up properly. You right. When, you, when you're about to go on vacay, you prepare for vacation. You, you buying your yep. fits for each day. For dinner, but see, for the, the, the biggest the biggest problem right now is it's a slow fall in building and they don't really think that this big motherfucker falling because it was such a huge machine. Right. Right. So it looked like it's falling in slow motion, but in real time, that motherfucker coming down. Yeah. I hope not, but... <laughs> I hope not, but you know. Well, part part of what I wanted to do for Taj was to create a condition where he can retire and he no longer has to teach for those that much time. He can do it as a leisurely pursuit now when he sit around and have conversations with other people from the struggle. And then we can get to watch it like they watch their late night TV show. Mm -hmm. Right. So I like, can you imagine just being able to turn your TV on and see a casual conversation um, on civics between Taj and Malachi York? Mm -hmm. Or say Taj and Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. Just a cordial conversation about 
the mechanics of government and the understanding of waking up people or any subject that y'all throw out there. Right. Right. To see these elders to not be not at their job done, we got to go to a different level. But to be able to draw from their um, study and the years of teaching, right, we can benefit so much more 